Hey y'all, uh, I'm Logesh and this is my wife. I'm Rachel. Uh, basically, I'm from Malaysia. I'm born and raised in Malaysia, lived there for most of my life. I moved here about nine years ago and recently I actually stumbled upon this video. It's called, How Did uh, Malaysia Do the Impossible with the Fight Against COVID? I watched a little snippets of it, but then I was like, oh man, I'm gonna pause that video so that we can actually watch it together and delve in deeper and see what it's all about. Yeah, so the video is originally posted on the channel, The Other Side of the Truth. We're gonna link that down below. Uh, please go check out their channel and show it some love as well. Cool. So let's let's watch this video and just dive into it. Imagine your country is going through a huge political crisis. You have a new leader and several states have new governments. To add to this, not only is your country facing political crisis, but also economical, health, and defense. And then the worst thing that could ever happen happens. The coronavirus hits Malaysia. So yeah, uh, about the political crisis, I've actually heard a lot about it. What, just in a nutshell, what happened was that uh, our former prime minister resigned because there was some conflict within his political party and then the king of Malaysia actually appointed, elected someone else to lead the country, to become the prime minister of the country. And then the process of forming this new government, so you can see there's a lot of political chaos that's happening and that happened right before COVID hit Malaysia. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were in That's a lot alone to be going on in a country. Yeah. So, let's keep watching. Malaysia. Malaysia was in some serious trouble. But don't you ever underestimate the power of Malaysians. Here are 15 ways that Malaysia did the impossible. Number 15, donations and volunteer organizations. So many people volunteered and so many organizations helped out. For example, Amaret provided healthcare workers with food, AC units, and raised over 3 million ringgit for medical supplies. Let's hold on for a second. 3 million ringgit. That's crazy. And that's coming from a non-profit. If, if I heard that right, right? It was a non non profit uh, organization. Imra. I don't know what Imra is. Okay, maybe I think it's a. It might be a non profit organization, but man, raising three million ringgit. I think that's equivalent to about eight hundred thousand USD. Yeah. Uh, it's still a lot of money. I've experienced that before. I know when we have some sort of crisis, especially to like the well being of the people of Malaysia, we like to rally and come together and support and uh, do the best we can. And so, man, that's. <laughs> I'm already f having feelings right here, you know. <laughs> Number 14, top doctor. Dr. Noor Hassan Adula has been ranked one of the top doctors in the entire world at fighting the coronavirus. And not only does he present accurate facts, he's able to do it in a way that gathers support and also keeps people calm as he does it. Number 13, the movement control order and the enhanced movement control order. These things are not easy to pull off, and it took so many people and different organizations to work together to have them work. Number 12, Indra. You know what's funny? Yeah. Um, so all of our friends back in Malaysia, I've seen them post about MCO, and I actually didn't know what the acronym stood for. It's movement control order. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's similar to what we have going on here in the United States, which is shelter in place, or um, SIP is the abbreviation here. It sounds like MCO is a lot stricter than our shelter in place. Um, like they only let one person go out in a car at one time. They can't even go on walks around the neighborhood. They have to stay inside. And guys, like this is Malaysia where they don't have like backyards like we do here in the States. So they're literally inside their house this mm -hmm. whole entire time. Yeah. And it's actually enforced too, that to the sense that people get fined for going against these rules. So they're really, really strict and it's actually really enforced. Here, there's not really consequences for breaking Yeah, there aren't COVID. really ramifications if, if someone breaks any uh, quarantine rules here. Uh, it's kind of lenient. Yeah, kudos to Malaysia. It's, uh, he's, what he said is on point. It's really, really not easy to pull off. Yeah. Volunteers. There are so many people that helped out and volunteered and did so many different things, like food delivery. <laughs> Number 11, 
building temporary hospitals. Malaysia was able to build temporary hospitals very efficiently and quickly. For example, the largest agro park in Asia was able to be built into a hospital in three days. Number 10. Hold up. <laughs> three days? They built a whole hospital in three days? That's crazy. That's amazing. Within three days. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I could go as far to say that it's almost no chance that could happen here with the healthcare costs in America. In America. No. Would you agree? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's oh, just yeah. no chance. And doing that in three days, that's so impressive. I'm like feeling so proud of my country right now. <laughs> like, this is so amazing. The two blade cluster. The two blade cluster complied with any order from MOH and they never complained even though they had to wait long hours in the heat. Number nine, banks. Banks lent to the borrowers for six months. Number eight, universities. Universities allowed students to stay for free and provided them food as well. Number seven, stipends. Nearly four million homes received up to 1,600 ringgit. Number six, So stipends is cool. I think we have something here similar. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Stimulus check? Stimulus check. Yeah. Lower income to, I guess, middle income, lower middle income people in America do get stimulus checks, which is similar to stipends. I think that immediate money that you receive from the government is definitely going to be really helpful. Mm-hmm. I think it's great that they're giving out stipends, too. Mm-hmm. Ignoring politics, opposition leaders came together and forgot about politics for the good of Malaysia. Now that is really cool. Number guys, guys, hold on a second. <laughs> like, like, that is absolutely cool political leaders coming together to fight like going back to my initial point right that's a very cultural thing malaysians see that the well-being of other malaysians are you know being um, attacked in, in whatever way they come together they rally up together mm -hmm. even opposition leaders they put away their differences and they come together so that we can fight against you know any anything that's yeah. attacking the well-being of malaysia i oh man that's with the indifferences and with all the things that's going on, especially during a political crisis, to be able to come together with other leaders, that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine like what that would even look like here in the States, because I feel like everyone, all the political parties are so much trying to fight for their own gain, mm -hmm. that to see them come together like that just sounds like a miracle in itself. You yeah. would rarely see that happen, so that's really cool, Malaysia. Really cool. That. Protecting the most vulnerable. Malaysia did a great job of protecting those that were most vulnerable, homeless and foreign workers. They were put in public halls and provided a tent. Number four, Malaysians returning home. Malaysians returning home from overseas were provided a free hotel, free food, and COVID-19 testing during their two-week quarantine. Number three. Whoa. <laughs> free hotel, free food, free COVID-19 testing. I know there's way more people here in America. Yeah, it's yeah. obviously more difficult to do more COVID-19 testing. But anyone returning to Malaysia to get all those free things for two weeks during a two-week quarantine period. How tempted does that make so you feel like you just want to go to Malaysia right yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> like maybe, maybe we should just go. We'll get the two-week free, you know, <laughs> living expense paid and food. <laughs> it really shows that Malaysians are actually taking this very, very seriously. It seems like that's why they were successful in the fight against COVID, right? Like, um, anyone who's coming in the country, you know, we want to give you access to place to live so that you actually abide by the quarantine rules, that you're actually getting tested to know that you are safe to be integrated to society again. Yeah. Respect for frontline workers. I've never seen so much respect and love for frontline workers. It was so beautiful to see all the support Malaysians gave to the frontline workers. Number two. So yeah, the frontline workers, I personally have experienced that. I mean, Malaysians really show a lot of respect to these frontline workers. Like even for my mom, she was a pharmacist. And growing up, even before like pre-COVID, I've seen her interacting with a lot of people and everyone shows a lot of appreciation to her for just being in the medical field, being able to help other people. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of appreciation for her, for doctors, for basically frontline workers, right? Yeah. And so it's reflected even more during yeah, a crisis time. Uh, so yeah that's that's amazing and just not frustrating but like kind of sad to see that you know there are a sector of group of people here that feel that the frontline workers are in some sort of conspiracy or uh, what have you <laughs> yeah and and might not be getting the respect that they actually deserve because they are out there fighting this disease they are in the front they're fighting this disease so we ought to be showing as much respect and much support and love to those people yeah Fixing the PPE shortage for frontline workers. At the beginning of the crisis, there wasn't enough PPE for all the frontline workers. And so, Malaysians took it onto themselves. For example, a fashion 
designer realized she had a skill set that could be very valuable, and so she took the initiative to organize an entire team to make PPE. Prisoners made PPE, college students made PPE, even a Malaysian born with no arms didn't let that stop her from making PPE. And number one, most important, is teamwork. It didn't matter if you're a celebrity or an average person. It didn't matter your social status. It didn't matter your gender, your religion, your ethnicity. All Malaysians came together for the better of Malaysia. And that's how Malaysia was able to do the impossible, to go from a country that had three times more cases than any other country in Southeast Asia to now be one of the safest countries in the entire world. I'd like to thank all the Malaysians that helped make this video possible. So many of you wrote to me, sent me videos and pictures. Wow. Yeah. Guys, oh. <laughs> this is how you should do it. Like, just watching that video, I'm... I'm getting all emotional, you know? I'm... The main emotion I think I'm feeling right now is that I'm so, so proud of Malaysia and how they've handled this and the state that I read about the news that they were one of the worst countries in Southeast Asia at the initial part of you know the COVID mm -hmm. pandemic to now one of the safest countries in the world uh, and just by all these measures right and it's so amazing to see and so proud I feel so proud for my country a lot of other countries should try to use this as, a, as an example and try to follow this I just think you know even just watching you watch the video just like all the pride that's in your heart <laughs> And just thinking, I mean, you've lived here for nine years, but you still carry all your Malaysian pride with you. Mm -hmm. Just like how Malaysians that are currently in Malaysia and live there, how much even more pride they have for their country and how it really shines and just coming together. A small part of me is almost like I'm jealous, like, oh, I wish <laughs> America did this so that we can feel the sort of safety in the place that we live. The other part of me too is also frustrated because not a lot of people follow social distancing rules here, going out to places and you can see groups of people walking together, not wearing their mask. Uh, I watched a video the other day about someone demanding to enter a grocery store without wearing a mask to see how Malaysia is doing it where people are actually following these rules. Yeah. Uh, it's encouraging, it's encouraging in the point that there is hope to curb this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, it just makes me immense proud of, of my country. Yeah. Uh, Alright guys, uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to go to the original video. We're gonna link everything down below. Go over to them, show them some love. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please go ahead and hit like and you can also subscribe to see more of our content. Um, as well as leave us comments and just let us know what you thought of this video and of how Malaysia is really doing a great job to handle COVID-19. Alright, thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.